Hello, welcome to educator.com and my course on AP Psychology. In this first uh, segment, we're going to be taking a look at a demonstration in terms of what psychology is. But before that, let's take a look at a couple questions that I often get from my students. First is, so you're a psych teacher, you can read my mind. No. Uh, I'm pretty good at reading people, but I cannot read your mind. That's not something that's possible for anybody. So you're a shrink. No, you're thinking of perhaps a psychiatrist who is a Freudian psychoanalyst. And no, I don't shrink anybody's heads and I don't do any of those sorts of things. And I'm not a psychiatrist. I am a psychology teacher. Okay, analyze me. That takes an awful lot of mental and emotional energy to analyze everybody I meet. And so as a general rule, I try not to, but it does happen from time to time. Oh, good. I can tell you all my problems. No, I'm a psychology teacher. I am really good with a lot of things, including listening. But in terms of all your problems, um, if you've got that kind of set of issues, perhaps we should refer you to the school psychologist or one of the school counselors. So there's a lot of misconceptions that go on with being a psychology teacher and dealing with the whole idea of psychology and psychologists and counseling and some misconceptions that go on. So rather than dealing with all the misconceptions, let me share with you a demonstration to show you one way where I can um, kind of play with your mind a little bit. So this is a demonstration of memory that I've been doing since 1992. So I've been doing this whole thing a while. There's a professor at um, uh, one of the universities in central Indiana, and he created this and I decided to try it out. And I'm going to share a list of words with you. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is have a piece of paper out, just a scratch piece of paper, no big deal. So a piece of paper and a pen to write something down on later. And your job is to recall all of the words as best you can. So watch and listen very carefully right now. So please open your notebook, have a writing implement handy for after the demonstration. Here are the words. They're going to go quickly. Bed, night, comfort, rest, awake, snore, dream, eat, sound, slumber, wake. Okay, those are the words. On that blank piece of paper in front of you, I'd like you to write your name, your full address, your phone number, and your parents' full names. So I'm going to give you a moment while, so go ahead and hit pause while you write those things down. And I'll, I'll wait here for you. Okay, so now that you're done pausing and you've restarted the video, you've written, uh, you've written those things down. Now, write the words that I just gave you in any order. In any order because I just gave you a distractor activity. I tried to mess with you a little bit. So write these words that you can recall in any order. And normally while you are doing that, I would go around the room to see the words my students wrote down. So you're writing these words down as many, in any order, as many as you can think of. And again, if you need to, um, I'm gonna move on now, but if you need to pause to continue writing, by all means, please do because I normally give about a minute, minute and a half for this. Now, how many of you remember the word aardvark? And usually my responses in class are, aardvark, aardvark, what are you talking about? You never said aardvark. I'm like, okay, okay, and it wasn't there. Then I ask, do you remember the word sleep? And so when I ask that question, I said, well, raise your hand if you, if you remember the word sleep. In fact, so it's easier for me to count. Everybody who remember the word sleep, stand up. Did you remember the word sleep? And so I, I go around and I count um, how many people have remembered the word sleep. And typically, 30 to 90% will recall the word sleep. And I will be reminding them of this all semester long. And so why do you remember the word sleep? Well, 
most people will say something to the effect of, most of the words dealt with sleep. They were connected. There were um, similarities involved. So they'll come up with something like that. Fair enough. So we have that, that little brief discussion. And so then I give the first vocab term of the course, and that is schema. And a schema is a mental map or a cognitive map. And so with cognitive, we're talking about thinking. A mental filter or a representation of an idea. And this representation is made up of associations and connections. We need schemas to learn. If we don't have schemas, we can't learn anything new. And so the idea of schema comes from the work of Jean Piaget, who studied children and cognitive development. So schema is kind of a big deal. So what I'd like to do is to give you a visual representation. So when we are born, you know, we've got billions of neurons and you know, we've, we've got all of these uh, neurons that are in our brain and we kind of have a genetic um, setup, a genetic set of directions on what's going to happen in our lives. We've got the genetic push. Well, then we start having some experiences, you know, we're, we're hanging out with mom and mom's talking to us and she's, hey, look at you, look at you. Oh, you're my little favorite little guy. Oh, I love you. You so much. You're wonderful. So we're having these experiences and, and you know, dad is playing with us. And, um, and so, um, we then start playing with friends and we go to play dates. And so we're filling in, we're adding connections. Our schemas are changing. Our schemas are being added to. Our filters are becoming denser. Our filters, our maps here, our screens, if you will, they're getting more detailed. Then we go to school and then teachers start teaching us stuff. And we start making more connections. And then we start learning about dinosaurs. And then we start learning about biology and mathematics. And we start learning to read. And we start learning all these really cool things about nature and about the universe. And we start learning about star systems. And then we get into algebra. And then we start getting into high school. And we start taking courses like history and psychology and sociology and economics. And the thing is, is that the more experiences we have, the more experiences we have, the more complex our schema. The more complex our schema, Interestingly enough, the easier it is to learn. So literally, by having more experiences when you're young and all through life, the more you know, the more you can know. So if your schema is filled up with experiences from reading, from uh, television documentaries, from uh, travel experiences, from experiences doing different sports and uh, dance and acting and music and all these different things, the more experiences you have, the more complex your schemas get, the more complex your schemas get, the stronger your brain gets. Because if you are trying to get into your brain, you're trying to get from this point to this point, if your schema is only the original black lines, you only have from here to here, and that's it. You got about one, two, maybe three ways to get from A to B. But look at all these different ways you can get from this point to this point. The more you know, the more you can know. And so the thing is, is that I'm talking about this in a cognitive way, but in the brain, Imagine that instead of a two-dimensional flat surface, imagine this is a three-dimensional surface, surf, surface 
um, three-dimensional um, representation. It's called a neural network. The outside of your brain is your neural network, your cerebral cortex. The more connections, the more lines you have drawn, the more neural connections you have, the easier it is for you to learn new things, the smarter you get, the easier it is to have continuing experiences in a positive way. So when you have a circumstance when uh, you know, you've had a, a brain injury or you've been neglected, a lot of the stuff might disappear. A lot of that stuff might go away. But the richer and uh, more wonderfully enriched your experiences are, the better off you're going to be. Whether you're the child or the parent, the richer the experiences the child can have from the parents, the better off the kids are going to be. So parents, make sure you have lots of books and magazines that you not only have in your home, but also that you read in front of your kids. That's going to help build the kid's neural network. Yeah. Neural network. So this is a schema of visual representation. The brain looks for patterns and tries to simplify the world. Schemas help us do this. The brain tries to make meanings where there may be none. You know, when we look at clouds, when we look at ceiling tiles, we'll find patterns where there really are none. Our brain alters reality. You know, we see reflections of oil in a puddle of water. But we have different kinds of schemas. And these schemas may deal with gender. The first thing you notice about a person is, are they male or female? We might have weight schemas. Are they skinny? Are they fat? Are they fit? Cultural schemas. Are they my culture? Or are they another culture? You know, what color skin do they have? You know, what is, what, what's the culture going on? We might have um, professional schemas. Well, are they a doctor? Are they a lawyer? Are they a teacher? Are they a mechanic? What kind of job do they have? Prejudicial ones. What color are they? Ooh, I don't like people like that. Or, ooh, I like people like that. Whatever it might happen to be. But there was a song from back in the 1960s called The Boxer. And schema is kind of like this. A man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. Schemas that we have filter in and filter out what we notice. What are your schemas going to be like? How attentive can you be to this new information? So again, the more you experience, the more you can learn new things in a much easier way. So psychology, what psychology does is it gives you new schemas. It gives you new perspectives. It gives you new points of view. It takes your own behavior and other people's behaviors and gives you a new way to look at them. It gives you new terminology to look at those ideas and to the, look at those behaviors. It gives you new tools and more complex tools to examine all these things. It gives you context and understanding as to why people do what they do. Why are people so weird? Psychology will tell you. So this course is an introduction. Each and every unit that we cover, there are 14 units. Every one of those can be its own university course. That's just the way it is. We're hitting the tip of the iceberg. And some of the topics that we're dealing with, like cognitive dissonance, one term can be its own doctoral dissertation. So intro psychology, AP psychology, is a, to me, I mean, I've been teaching it for a long time, my entire adult life, absolutely love this subject. And so join me on this journey as we take a look at AP psychology, the field of psychology, and how to best prepare yourselves for the AP psychology exam and how to ace it. So this is going to be the course that we're taking in this, uh, uh, with this particular segment on educator.com. So psychology, as we look at it, it's interdisciplinary. It connects to everything. Seriously, everything. It overlaps with biology, brain science, chemistry, sociology, economics, and more. Absolutely more. It has its own vocabulary. Like I was saying, 
the, we're going to learn a lot of new terms for stuff that we've seen before, but we never knew there was a term for. So terms are going to be a huge part of understanding human behavior. Some common words that we think we know, but we really don't, they're going to take on new meanings. Definitely a lot of new words. And we're going to be using roots. Uh, and so I um, uh, take apart a lot of words to show you that by understanding some uh, basic roots and prefixes and suffixes, how much easier the uh, exam and the understanding of psychology is going to be. So in review, what is psychology? I mean, other than the most fascinating subject on earth? Outside of that, yeah, it's still a lot. Why did you probably recall the word sleep when we did the demonstration earlier? Can you explain why that was? Can you tell me what a schema is and what kinds of schemas people have? Look at your own schemas. Look at your own filters. What filters do you have? And because psychology connects to so many different fields, which connections are jumping out at you so far? Sleep. Welcome to AP Psychology. Hope to see you for the rest of the course. And as always, there are discussion tabs down below. Please do not hesitate to ask any questions you may have at any point throughout the course. I will be happy to help you out with that. So, as I said before, join me in taking a look at AP Psychology here on educator.com.